G'day. Um, Hi. I want to book a holiday. Where do you want to go? There's a place I know, a destination far away, across the sea in my heart I feel, a land that beckons, somewhere I can find the real me. It's India, a land of adventure, India, the land for me, India, it's full of call centres and bloody hot curries cooked with ghee. From Muslim to Hindu, they've got it covered. I hope I run into Rahul Dravid. I'm in India with my Western money. India with my pasty skin. India, I'm getting a funny sense that I'm not blending in. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's time for some more quick fixes, and our first problem this week is the Packer Media Empire. Yes, the problem is that since Jamie Packer sold down his stake in PBL, the Packers don't actually control the empire anymore. Yeah, the biggest shareholder is now this private equity mob called CVC, fronted by a 36-year-old Scottish bloke called Adrian McKenzie. Yeah, he's been keeping a fairly low profile. He's obviously a bit uncomfortable with his role as the new Packer. Yeah, he, he needs a bit of coaching, I reckon, so I popped round to his house to help him out. G'day, Adrian. How are you? You're the new Packer, so we've got you a Packer kit. Everything you need to be the new packer. There you go. There's your polo kit. I don't people. You, you need to as you're the new packer. There's your packer whacker in case things go badly. I think that's the, uh, the trick is actually I don't consider myself to be the new packer. Oh, so. come on. You've got to be the new packer. We've got you a, a bikini model wife here. Very nice. Pre-nut, pre-signed. Yep. My name's in details. Uh, listen, I think my message might just be a bit upset. Yeah. And uh, a kidney for you, just in case you need it. That's actually been donated by the helicopter pilot. He wants to keep his job so much, he's donated the second kidney. Interesting taste. Mm. The next problem this week is the former PM Paul Keating. Now, yeah, well, Keating's become a huge problem for Kevin Rudd because mm. of that late line interview he did where he basically trashed everything about the Labor Party. Yeah, exactly. And because he reminds people what it was like to have a Labor leader that wasn't bland and boring. Indeed, indeed. Now, I've got the feeling that ever since that show, Keating the Musical became such a big hit, Keating thinks people love him again. Yes, couldn't agree more. He once described himself as the Placido Domingo of Australian politics. But would Keating become the Anthony Warlow of Australian politics by taking a role in a new musical? You're a little fryer, you are, aren't you? Mr Kidding, there's a, there's a role in a new musical called Kevin Rudd the Musical for an embittered old Prime Minister now, that comes in just before the election and spoils are things for Kevin Rudd. Would you like the role? Well, you know, the, you know the thing about the chaser? Not really. I've never met you guys before, but no. it just shows you so how easily it is to be a celebrity in Australia. I agree. If your donkey's a celebrity, yeah. anyone can be a celebrity. So will you play yourself in the musical? It's a very good part. It's a duet with Tony Jones. He's not a bit of man, no. Um, look, I think it's probably a good thing that he didn't take that role, because there is a scene in the musical where the old PM realises that he actually lost the 1996 election and that no one gives a shit about him anymore. Yeah, I don't think Paul's ready for that. the all-new meat pie pizza, then wait till you try the humongous taste of our battered Sab Supreme. You get a layer of delicious Savaloys, Chico Rolls, Nuggets, Kranskis, and anything else left unsold from a milk bar Bain Marie. All topped off with our special fizzy cola sauce. It's the ultimate fast food pizza. <laughs> So welcome to Nut Job of the Week, the segment where we take a look at some of the more left field people in our society. People with, shall we say, just slightly unusual views and beliefs. I think we can. And this week we are looking at some American moral crusaders who've devoted their entire lives to a remarkable calling. All over the world we want kids to know you can choose to live a gay life or you can choose to change and come out straight. Ah, uh, yes. Forget your cures for AIDS or cancer. These people are at the forefront of research trying to find a cure for homosexuality. So, 
Let's have a look at some of their amazing breakthroughs. Chaz, what have we got? Treatment number one for gays is rubber bands. Rubber band? Yes, apparently every time you catch yourself watching someone erotically, you've got to snap the band and you snap out of it. So elegant in its simplicity. From now on, I think uh, these should be the rubbers they hand out in health clinics. <laughs> but if you're not a rubber man, Chris, uh, you can always try bark. Bark? Yeah, not like that. Or what's better known as the looking at trees method. Ah, yes. As ex-lesbian Ann Pork wrote whenever she felt horny, I would look out my car window and say something like, Gosh, Lord, there's a tree out there. That tree is green and has leaves on it. Over time, that made me displace all lesbian thoughts. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. Heaven help a lesbian who lives in the desert. Okay, so... Good look at a cactus. Maybe. You've tried your rubber bands. You've tried looking at trees. But if you really want to convert a gay, what you need is to try erotic nude massages. Erotic nude massages, Chaz? That doesn't sound very pure. Shows how much you know about purity, Taylor, because I'll have you know the nude massage is the proven gay conversion method of the good of Reverend Colin Cook. Yeah. Now, he reckons a good nude fondle desensitises men against homosexual desires. And who am I to argue with that? Well, well, I think the question is, do these claims actually work? Uh -huh. To find out... We spent a day this week with a sample gay man called Chris, mm. there he is, and put the various techniques to the test to see if we could turn him straight. So he snapped his rubber band for every man, man he found attractive in Oxford Street, but no dice. So he'd gone to look at some trees. And then, massage time! Okay, so are you straight yet? No. I didn't say stop. <laughs> He has amazing powers of resistance. So strong, man. so strong. But look, it's not over yet, Chris. It's time to wheel out the big guns. Oh, yes. And return to the king of gay conversion, Richard Cohen. Watch now and learn as Cohen demonstrates his touch therapy. It's non-sexual. It establishes, like, parent-child relationship. So he didn't experience this growing up with his dad. Rob, do you feel a sexual connection right now? No, I don't. I feel very safe and very comforted, and um, it just feels wonderful. Wonderful. Well, that may have felt wonderful to that guy, but uh, let's see how it felt with our gay. This is very non-sexual. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling really safe and, and really comforted. I'm feeling more straight. No, I've got wood. Hopeless. 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 We are getting nowhere here, Chaz. But luckily, Richard Cohen still has one more amazing technique up his sleeve to blame his sexuality on your mother and take it out on her through the power of tennis. Yeah. I was angry at my mother. Okay. So I started saying, Mom! 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 Why did you do that to me? From pillow biter to pillow basher, just like that. How could that fail, Chaz? So, I, I, know. I think it is the moment of truth now. Will it work for Chris? Mom, 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 why did you do that to me? Hmm, so, Chris, you heterosexual now? No. Oh, Keep going, hit harder. You've got to get your anger out about everything. I feel better now, Chris. Yeah, I'm feeling good. 